Hi, I'm Dr. Achit Panth and today I'm going to review the products of the brand Minimalist. Minimalist has been around for quite some time. I finally got my hands on a few products and I'm going to share my views on them. I'm going to be putting timestamps so you can just skip to the product that you want to know about and at the end I'm going to give my views on the brand and just in general what I feel about the Minimalist. All the products are going to be described under the five headings. What does it do? How does it feel? How to use it? Who will it suit? And what precautions to take when you're using these products? First, let's start with retinol. Retinol 0.03% with coenzyme Q10. Okay, so we all know retinol is a good anti-aging agent. It stimulates collagen. It is the only product that has been scientifically proven to stimulate collagen, and it uh, reduces your fine lines and improves your wrinkles to a certain extent. It is also great for reducing your dark spots and reduces the appearance of open pores. So it's a good ingredient to have in your skincare routine, especially if you have acne. It also reduces acne and improves the acne scars. Okay. In this product, the retinol is present in 0.3%, so which is a good starting point. So I would say that if you are a beginner who is starting out with retinol, it is a good product to start with. It also has coenzyme Q10, which is an antioxidant. So ubiquinone is present in our skin. And as we age, the amount of ubiquinone does decrease. So it's a good addition. And mixing a retinol with a ubiquinone does make sense because retinol can sometimes cause a little bit of irritation, uh, whereas ubiquinone is more of kind of a soothing agent to the skin. So the combination does work well. How does it feel? It feels a little oily. It is a thick formulation. Uh, even though a few drops uh, can go a long way and it spreads really easily, uh, but it does feel a little heavy on the skin once you finish its application. Okay, so how should you use it? You should apply it on a clean, dry face at night. We all know that if you apply products on a damp face, it's always absorbed better. But for retinol, because it has a tendency to irritate, it is best to use it on a dry face. Okay, if you have very dry, sensitive skin, then you can use a thin moisturizer before you go on with a retinol. But this minimalist retinol is it's formulated in such a way that it is pretty thick and oily. So you can just go on uh, after a cleansed face, just on top with your first layer okay so you can apply this on a cleansed face and will not have any problems but remember that you should always be careful when you're using retinol okay so you can apply a small amount of vaseline on the corners of your mouth on the sides of the eyes and on the sides of the nose just so that this doesn't concentrate in these areas and cause irritation so if you already have irritation flaking in these areas you just want to be careful and apply a little bit of vaseline so it is a mild formulation so you should be able to tolerate it and i would still suggest you to start on alternate nights and if you're able to tolerate you can use it daily who will it suit the most so this product will be loved by everyone who has dry skin okay so it has a thicker formulation so it feels really nice and it moisturizes your skin well and you can just go on with a light moisturizer on top of this you may not like this product too much if you have very oily skin okay because this does feel a little heavy so if you have oily skin this might not be the best for you what precautions do you need to take as with all retinols you have to remember to always use a sunscreen uh, during the daytime whenever you use a retinol at night and also I would suggest not to mix a retinol retinol with uh, AHA, BHA solution okay because these alpha hydroxy and beta hydroxy acids tend to kind of uh, exfoliate the skin and irritate the skin a little bit so if you apply retinol on top it can cause a bit of redness and irritation so see if you are a seasoned skincare uh, junkie and you know you have uh, prepped your skin up properly over time then you can use them together but I would still suggest when you're starting out to not use any AHA, BHA with a retinol also uh, better to avoid benzoyl peroxide if you are given a benzoyl peroxide for your acne use that in the morning and wash it off I usually prefer a short contact time of benzoyl peroxide and then use a retinol later on okay don't mix a retinol with the benzoyl peroxide in order to reduce irritation next good anti-aging serum that they have is the multipeptide serum this has palmitoyl tripeptide 1 palmitoyl tripeptide 7 and oligopeptides so how do these peptides work? Whenever there is an injury to the skin, there are certain factors that are released that signals the skin to make more collagen and repair the wound, okay? So this serum has the ingredients which signals the skin to make more collagen. It has been seen that whenever you apply a peptide serum, it boosts collagen formation and it really helps in smoothing out your lines and wrinkles and also makes your skin appear a little firm, okay? So 
see if you have a lot of sagging skin it's not going to uh, you know make it all okay with just application of a serum but if you have just started noticing early signs of aging or if you want to improve your fine lines and wrinkles then this multipeptide serum does work well it also improves the skin elasticity and makes your skin appear more smooth and firmer because it is kind of reducing the appearance of fine lines it tends to give your skin a better feel and a more smoother appearance how does it feel it feels a little tacky okay it does spread easily so about 3 to 4 drops is enough for your full face and one or two drops for your neck Okay, so it does feel a little sticky after application. So I would suggest you can go on with a light moisturizer on top of this. So how do you use it? You can use the multipeptide serum at night. Okay, so on top of your retinol, you can seal it on with a multipeptide serum. So the combination of retinol and uh, multipeptide serums work really well. So both of these are really powerful uh, anti-aging agents. So this can be combined and applied at night. Who will it suit? It will suit really anybody who is looking for an anti-aging serum. Okay, so this works well in combination with retinol, or even as a standalone product if you cannot tolerate a retinol. And also, if you have fine lines developing around your eyes, this is a really good option for that. So, a lot of people with dark circles and fine lines do have allergies and are not able to tolerate products with either retinol, lactic acid, or even vitamin K or certain plant extracts under their eyes, which will help in lightening it. If you're not able to tolerate these products, then this multipeptide serum is a good option for you because it feels really light on the skin and also you will not develop any irritation to it so you can use the serum under the eyes as well so what precaution should you take nothing really it suits everyone there is no uh, you know do's or don'ts when you go on with a peptide serum just apply a good quantity at night on the face and neck so this is probably one of the most reasonable like the cheapest peptide uh, that is available in the market today so it is definitely worth a try just remember that you have to use it for about 6 to 8 months to completely see its benefits. So next let's move on to their vitamin C serum. So their vitamin C has ethyl ascorbic acid in 10% along with acetyl glucosamine. Vitamin C always has stability issues. All the studies that have been published regarding the benefits of vitamin C have been mostly done on L ascorbic acid which can be a little irritating and is also a very unstable molecule. So now there are coming up with new formulations to make the molecule more stable. So ethyl ascorbic acid is a slightly more stable formulation of vitamin C. We are still not very sure you know how much of the vitamin C actually penetrates the skin, how much of it actually helps in stimulating collagen but it is a good addition to your skin care if you're looking for a slight brightening effect. It also contains acetyl glucosamine which is a good addition. It is a precursor to hyaluronic acid so it helps the skin to produce more hyaluronic acid so it helps in uh, improving your skin hydration and also in smoothing out your fine lines. It is also shown to reduce uh, melanin formation so it might help in reducing the dark spots as well. So what does it do? We all know vitamin C is an antioxidant so it helps in reducing the free radical damage that has occurred after sun exposure or due to daily oxidative stress to the skin and also it is a brightening agent, it reduces dark dark spots, it is also known to improve collagen uh, formation. So how does it feel? It feels very watery, light and it spreads easily. So how do you use it? You have to use it on a clean face early in the morning. It's better to apply it on a slightly damp face to improve its absorption. Okay, So you can apply it on the whole face in the morning and then you can go on with your moisturizer and sunscreen. If you don't use a retinol or you don't use any actives at night, then you can use just a vitamin C serum at night as well. Okay, so you can even use it twice in a day. So it can be used either morning or evening or both times. But I prefer to use it in the morning and keep your actives and retinols at night. Who will it suit the most? People with oily skin are going to love this product because it feels really light on the skin. And you know, you can go on with a moisturizer, a light gel based moisturizer on top or directly go on top with a sunscreen. Just remember that the product has to get absorbed completely before you go on top with any layer of either a moisturizer or a sunscreen. As it contains only 10% of vitamin C, it is a good starting point for beginners so I would do not suggest to go, go in for 15 or 20 percent when you're just using it for the first time because that can lead to a little bit of irritation and it does cause a little bit of a stinging sensation okay so it's always best to start with a 10 percent vitamin C so remember that vitamin C is the best and it's formulated between 8 to 20 percent less than 8 percent might not be very effective
effective and more than 20% causes a lot of irritation without adding much benefit. So it's best to stick between 8 to 20%. Precautions do we need to take when you're using a vitamin C? Just remember to always use a sunscreen whenever you're using vitamin C. Otherwise, there is no point. Any kind of antioxidant whenever you're applying on the skin, only if you use a sunscreen in the day, it, you know, be fully effective and do its job. Otherwise, UV damage is going to occur and it's just not going to be enough to just apply an antioxidant serum. Okay, so sunscreen is a must. Also, if you have a lot of acne or active acne, large acne lesions, then vitamin C might not be a good ingredient for you. Okay, though vitamin C suits all types of skin types, but I would suggest that if you have a lot of acne, get that sorted first before you go on with a vitamin C serum because a vitamin C serum is always a, you know, a slightly thicker formulation. So it tends to exacerbate acne. So best to avoid it when you have active acne. Now let's move on to the next product, which is a tranexamic acid. So this product has tranexamic acid as well as hydroxyphenoxypropionic acid. Tranexamic acid is in 2% formulation. So what does this do? So tranexamic acid helps in reducing dark spots. So tranexamic acid basically inhibits plasmin and this plasmin actually stimulates melanocyte stimulating hormone. That is the hormone that makes melanin. Okay. So it blocks that and it also has an anti-tyrosinase activity. That means the enzyme which helps in making melanin, it inhibits that as well. So it helps in reducing dark spots. It also helps in reducing UV induced skin darkening. So I would suggest using tranexamic acid whenever you're expecting a lot of sun exposure because tranexamic acid does help in reducing the damage that can occur after UV radiation exposure. So the hydroxyphenoxy propionic acid in this is a good adjuvant to tranexamic acid. So this HPA reduces is the melanin transfer to the keratinocytes okay so we have two types of cells in our epidermis one is the keratinocyte and one is the melanocyte so this melanocyte is the one which makes the pigment melanin so the entire skin structure is formed by the keratinocytes so these melanocytes form melanin and they transfer it to the keratinocytes so this transfer is blocked by hpa so it helps in reducing the dark spots so how does it feel it does feel light it is slightly oily but it does not have any kind of a sticky feeling to it and it spreads easily so how to use it you can use it on a clean face at night you can even use it on top of a retinol so you can go on with a retinol first and then apply a tranexamic acid on top who will it suit it will suit anyone who is trying to combat dark spots but it's a very mild skin lightening agent if you have a lot of melasma and dark stubborn dark spots and just using tranexamic acid may not cut it for you okay you'll have to visit a dermatologist and get a proper prescription skin lightening agent if you want to lighten your melasma but this is a good maintenance for just starting to develop a few dark spots and a few freckles uh, you know or you want to get rid of those acne dark spots which are light then this tranexamic acid will be a good addition in your skincare routine so what precautions to take as with other skin lightening agents you have to use a sunscreen during the day in order to make it effective now we move on to the next product which is an alpha arbutin so this product has alpha arbutin 2% with aloe vera so how does it work alpha arbutin is a tyrosinase inhibitor so it inhibits the enzyme that is required for formation of melanin so hence it reduces melanin formation and improves your dark spots how does it feel it is pretty light and non-sticky and so you can apply it as a first layer on a cleansed face and go on top with your moisturizer and sunscreen so how to use it you can use it twice in a day on a cleansed face this can form a first layer and then you can go on top with a moisturizer and sunscreen in the morning or go on top with a moisturizer only at night okay so it can be used twice in a day who will it suit the most so anybody who is looking for a skin brightening agent which has the ability to reduce dark spots or anybody who is just beginning to notice light dark spots can use this product it will help so you can use it even just on the dark spots or on the whole face in our skin type darkening around the mouth or darkening on the sides of the face is very common so this can help in reducing that as well if you have freckles or post inflammatory hyperpigmentation or if you have dark spots that has been left behind after acne you can use this product twice in a day to reduce it so what precautions to take as with all skin lightening agents uh, you have to make sure that you're using a good amount of sunscreen during the day to get the full benefits of the product now let's move on to the next product which is niacinamide with hyaluronic acid this product has niacinamide 5% along with hyaluronic acid so what does niacinamide do niacinamide is a vitamin b3 it helps in improving ceramide production so it does repair the skin barrier it is also anti-inflammatory so can reduce your acne and acne eruptions and the inflammation that is associated with acne it also reduces dark spots by reducing melanosome formation it also reduces oil secretion from your oil glands so it is a good addition if you have acne prone skin 
So how does it feel? It is very watery, spreads easily and it does not feel sticky. So how should you apply this product? Since it has hyaluronic acid in it, always remember to apply it on a damp face. So when you wash your face in the morning and when your skin is a little damp, that is when you want to go on with your niacinamide and hyaluronic acid serum. Apply this evenly on a whole face and seal it with a moisturizer. Always remember to apply it on damp face and seal it with a moisturizer. This is very important in order to lock in the moisture. Otherwise, the hyaluronic acid is going to absorb water from under your your skin okay and it can actually make your skin appear more dry especially if you're living in a very dry environment where there is no humidity hyaluronic acid will not get any moisture to hang on to so it tends to absorb moisture from under your skin and dry your skin out okay so that is something we don't want so always remember to seal in the hyaluronic acid with a good layer of moisturizer who will it suit the most if you have acne prone skin and you feel that you break out very easily with a lot of moisturizers this is a good option for you you can use this as a moisturizer okay so uh, niacinamide hyaluronic acid combination is great for reducing your inflammation that occurs because of acne and also in reducing oil formation so this is a good option for you so just a quick note niacinamide is very very hyped it is touted to be you know this magical ingredient which kind of corrects everything from your open pores to dark spots to acne also anti-aging benefits so i want you to take that information with a pinch of salt okay it is a very mild agent it does help in improving all those issues that i mentioned but it is not very very robust so just using a niacinamide is not going to help with all of your uh, skincare concerns okay but it is a good addition and it is a mild ingredient well tolerated i also suggest you to stick to 5% uh, niacinamide not go on for 10 or 15% niacinamide because just higher percentage does not mean it is better higher percentage can also come with a lot of irritation and you know that can really lead to more darkening over the long period so i would not suggest you to go for a higher percentage and stick to 5% which is good it is well tolerated does not cause irritation and also serves the purpose of reducing your acne formation and also repairing skin barrier what precaution should you take whenever you apply the serum always make sure that you go on with a good thick layer of moisturizer in order to reduce the drying all these products, vitamin C, tranexamic acid, um, arbutin and niacinamide can help in reducing dark spots but remember that they are all very light uh, skin brightening agents, okay. They are very mild so if you have very stubborn dark spots or dark spots that are just not going with any creams then these creams are also not going to make too much of a difference. You will have to visit a dermatologist and take a proper prescription medication if you want to treat your melasma or stubborn dark spots, okay. These might not help too much but these ingredients are great if you're starting to develop mild dark spots or you have a tendency to darken so as a prevention also these ingredients are great to add to your skincare routine so my final thoughts on this brand minimalist it is heavily inspired by the pioneer in this field of uh, transparent skincare which is the ordinary so ordinary brought in a lot of uh, change in the whole skincare field you know hands became more conscious about what they are putting in their products also very transparent about what all ingredients are going in and the percentages of the exact ingredients which is all very beneficial for the consumers so i do feel ordinary brought this huge change in the skincare market it and minimalist is heavily inspired by the pioneer in this field of uh, transparent skincare which is the ordinary so ordinary brought in a lot of uh, change in the whole skincare field you know brands became more conscious about what they are putting in their products also very transparent about what all ingredients are going in and the percentages of the exact ingredients which is all very beneficial for the consumers okay so i do feel ordinary brought this huge change in the skincare market and minimalist is heavily inspired and kind of bordering on the line of plagiarism which I do not fully support but I do feel that brands who are coming out with this transparent skincare line is really going to benefit both the consumers and uh, you know people like me who would want to prescribe products and know exactly what is going on in the ingredients so I know uh, for the what is best suited for the patient okay but I do like that there is a range of skincare products that are available with uh, pharmaceutical grade ingredient and potent ingredients which can help in targeting and battling uh, common skincare concerns that we have. So I do appreciate that.
I did try to order a few products of Ordinary uh, so I could compare it with the Minimalist but whatever products I ordered from Amazon turned out to be fake but I will try to again uh, purchase it and review it separately so please let me know in the comment section below if you know any good vendors who are selling authentic Ordinary products I would really appreciate it. I hope you found this video useful and you got to learn a lot from it. I would always suggest you to read the ingredients that is there in the skincare product so you know what you're applying on your skin the ingredients the percentage always makes a huge difference okay whether it will suit you or not and also the formulation makes a big difference on whether it is suitable for your skin type and remember that no youtube recommendation can substitute visiting a dermatologist in person so nobody even me even my recommendations might not be the best suited for your skin so it can never be a substitute for visiting a dermatologist and getting your skin checked and getting a proper prescription that is customized for your skin type okay this video was just made to kind of guide you uh, you know whether if you are planning to use minimalist products so if you have dry skin oily skin whether certain products will suit you or not so just a general guide okay it's not a substitute for a consultation with a dermatologist i want you to understand that please so if you like such skin and hair related content please follow me on my instagram handle dr achal md i try to post such skin and hair related content daily thank you for watching